A group of scientists, including two FDA leaders, published a review Monday saying COVID-19 booster shots are not needed for the general public. It comes a week before the Biden administration says it plans to offer booster shots to anyone with two doses of a Pfizer or Moderna shot. An FDA advisory group is meeting Friday to discuss the support of widespread booster shots. CBS News medical contributor Dr. David Agus says despite the review, the data on booster shots speaks for itself. And I've talked to health officials there, and it's clear that immunity goes down on a monthly basis, and giving a booster shot raises immunity four to tenfold, and they are seeing fewer infections, fewer hospitalizations, and fewer deaths in the vaccinated who have been given a booster shot. More companies and local governments are beginning to mandate COVID-19 vaccines. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is fighting the mandates, saying he will fine local governments $5,000 for every employee required to be vaccinated. Florida is one of the few states with ICU bed availability at 10 percent or less. Alabama is another state running out of room in its hospitals, and it is starting to affect non-COVID patients. A 73-year-old man died of a cardiac event after being turned away from 43 hospitals because there were no available cardiac ICU beds. His family is now urging people to get vaccinated to free up space in hospitals so this doesn't happen to anyone else. I want to bring in Dr. Sarah Nafziger now. She is the Vice President of Clinical Operations at the University of Alabama. Dr. Nafziger, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Can you tell us what you are seeing in your state, especially in terms of how hospitals are handling the surge in coronavirus cases? Absolutely. So, you know, it's kind of a good news, bad news situation for us. Right now, we're starting to see case numbers drop and hospitalizations decrease. So that's the great news. But the bad news for us is that we are very challenged right now with critical care capacity in particular. Our hospital this morning, you know, has a tremendous demand for ICU beds as we have every day. But the thing that's different is right now, a significant portion of that demand is from patients who have COVID-19 and are having prolonged hospitalizations, requiring ventilatory support and those type things. So tremendous challenge for us in managing the demand for critical care resources right now. And tell us about coronavirus cases in children. We know they're on the rise with these cases accounting for about a third of all the cases. Is, is that the trend that you're also seeing in Alabama? And, and what, if anything, is being done to protect these kids who can't yet be vaccinated? You know, it sure is what we're seeing. You know, we're seeing a tremendous drop in new cases in adults, and that's great news, but we're seeing cases skyrocket in children, and many of them are too young to be eligible for vaccination right now. That's not a surprise to us because school started back and we knew that the children would be together and more likely to transmit disease. The thing that's concerning to us in healthcare is that we have inconsistent masking policies in our school systems. Some are requiring masking, some aren't. And in some school systems, masking policies are being enforced inconsistently. So definitely we know that's contributing to spread of disease. What we don't know is how is that going to translate into hospitalizations, both for children and for the adults that they might subsequently infect. So that's something we're very concerned about, watching very closely for sure. Now, in terms of vaccination rates, Alabama has one of the lowest, with only about 40 percent of the state fully vaccinated. What do you think can be done to help increase vaccinations in the people in your state? What do you think would finally convince them to get the jab? You know, I wish I knew. Uh, Right now, what I'm seeing in our healthcare facilities is that our staff is completely exhausted. They're physically spent, they're emotionally exhausted, and we're managing a surge of COVID patients who are critically ill. And for the most part, this was preventable. Uh, These are patients who are in large part unvaccinated and who could have been vaccinated. So it's really taken a toll on our healthcare workers. And I would hope that that knowledge might help convince people to become vaccinated. I think when you combine that with just further education about the vaccine and as people are seeing more and more experience with it and that people have been vaccinated, it's preventing severe illness and most importantly, preventing death. I'm hoping that people will become more and more comfortable with it. 
And doctor, there is um, some confusion and uncertainty right now over the booster shots and whether they might be necessary or not for the general population. If booster shots become widely available, uh, how do you see that uh, fitting into Alabama's fight against the pandemic? You know, early in the pandemic, when, when vaccines first became available, they were in short supply. Now we have plenty of vaccine supplies, and we also have great mechanisms to deliver vaccines. So vaccine delivery is not a barrier to individuals becoming vaccinated in the state of Alabama. And if booster shots or any other vaccines are, are recommended by the science, then we're poised and ready to deliver those vaccines. You know, we have a lot of people who are who are asking for those booster shots, people who they're not recommended for right now, a lot of people who want it. And then we have a lot of people who are still hesitant, who are not ready to be vaccinated. But the bottom line is that our healthcare system is standing by, ready to deliver those vaccines, and we're eager to get them in the arms of the people so that we can put this behind us. Dr. Sarah Napsiger, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. Thank you.